applicability of accounting standards to various entities including criteria for classification of entities so here we will be speaking about applicability of accounting standards to various entities so when we speak about various entities we should know the classification and the criteria is laid down for classifying the entities so first we will look into the classification of entities and then to the extent what accounting standards are applicable to them so starting with the classification of entities so if we see the appendix 1 we will get the classification so criteria for classification of entities so if you see the criterias first you will come across something called small and medium sized companies so small and medium sized companies which are called as smc as defined in clause 2 sub clause f of the companies accounting standard rule 2006 you will get the definition definition of smcs and what is non smcs but first we will go through something called non corporate entities so criteria for classification of non corporate entities which is been decided by the institute of chartered accountants of india so they have been divided into three levels level 1 level 2 and level 3 entities so we'll understand what comes what falls under level 1 and so non corporate entities which fall in any one or more so any one satisfied also any one of the criteria is satisfied also it will fall under level 1 category entities so any one or more of the following categories at the end of the relevant accounting period so this is at the end at the last day of the balance sheet or the we can say any accounting period whichever the company is following the last date will be the taken as the day on which we will check whether the any of this criteria is been fulfilled and accordingly the entity will fall under that level so end of the relevant accounting period are classified as level 1 entity so any of this one of the criteria is fulfilled it will fall under level 1 entity so what are they entities whose equity or debt securities are listed or are in the process of listing on any stock exchange whether in india or outside so listed or in the process of listing banks including cooperative banks financial institutions or entities carrying on insurance business all commercial industrial and business reporting entities whose turnover excluding other income exceeds 50 crores in the immediately preceding accounting year okay and all commercial industrial and business reporting entities having borrowings including public deposits in excess of 10 crores at any time during the immediately preceding accounting year and holding and subsidiary entities of any or none of the above they will also become the level 1 entities so any of the one of the category criteria is been fulfilled it will be level 1 entity and if it is any of that is falling in level 1 entity and they have the holding and subsidiary then though it any of the criteria is not fulfilled by that holding or subsidiary but their main whichever the holding company is satisfying that is falling under level 1 category then this holding and subsidiary will be also falling under level 1 category so if assume subsidiary is falling in level 1 then holding will also be in level 1 though any of the criteria is still not fulfilled if holding is falling in level 1 category then subsidiary will obviously fall under level 1 category though any of the criteria are not been fulfilled level 2 entities they are called smes non corporate entities which are not level 1 entities but fall in any one of 
more of the following categories are classified as level 2 entities. So who are not satisfying level 1, we will go to level 2 whether any of it is satisfied or not criteria. So what is the criteria? All commercial, industrial and business reporting entities whose turnover excluding other income exceeds rupees 1 crore but does not exceed rupees 50 crore in the immediately preceding accounting year. So 1 crore more than 1 crore but less than 50 lakhs right 50 crores sorry 50 crores more than 1 crore but less than 50 crores because more than 50 crores it will fall under your level 1 category so 1 crore to 50 crores between it will fall under level 2 categories so does not exceed rupees 50 crores in the immediately preceding accounting year okay so 50 crores and below will be level 2 all commercial industrial and business reporting entities having borrowings including public deposit in excess of rupees 1 crore but not in excess of rupees 10 crores at any time so here also 1 crore and 10 crores between will be falling under level 2 so, no, but not in excess of 10 crore. So, 10 crore above, it will be level 2. During the immediate and holding and subsidiary entities of any one of them. So, any one of the category is fulfilled, their holding or subsidiary will also fall under that same category. Then level 3. Level 3 is SMEs, but what it is non-corporate entities which are not covered under level 2 level 1 and level 2 are considered as level 3 entities okay so we will check any company we will scrutinize that whether they fall in level 1 or level 2 if they are not falling any of them then it is a level 3 company okay their holding and subsidiary also fall in the same category irrespective whether they fulfill the criteria or not okay irrespective whether they if they have not fulfilled any criteria, but they are holding or subsidiary is in that level category, level 1 or level 2 category, then it will fall under the same. Okay. So, we understood how to classify a non-corporate entity. What are the criteria? Same way it is for the SMCs. So, what are the SMCs? So, SMC means a company whose equity or debt is securities are not listed or are not in the process of listing. So, when we saw SMEs, it was like whether listed or in the process of listing. But here SMC is not listed or not in the process of listing on any stock exchange whether in India or outside, which is not a bank, financial institution or an insurance company whose turnover excluding other income does not exceed rupees 50 crores in the immediate preceding accounting year which does not have borrowings including the public deposits in excess of rupees 10 crores in any time during the immediately preceding accounting year and which is not a holding and subsidiary of a company which is not a SMC okay so this is a definition of SMC so, explanation for the purpose of clause F, a company shall qualify as a SMC if the conditions mentioned therein are satisfied at the end of the relevant accounting period. So, at the end of the relevant accounting period, we will verify whether any of the criteria are fulfilled or not. Any one criteria is fulfilled, then it will fall under that category and accordingly the accounting standards applicable to them. We will apply it for the preparation and presentation of financial statements. So now what is non-SMCs? Companies not falling within the definition of SMCs are considered as non-SMCs. So it's the simple. You want to remember what is the definition of SMCs, SMEs and we should apply the accounting standards applicable to the respective category of the company or entity so now the general instructions general instructions are same for smcs and smcs smes 
so what are the additional requirements so additional requirements specifies if there has been a change from one accounting period to other whether the entity or that company has changed the level like in smcs there are no levels but in smes if it was either falling in a level 2 and it became a level 1 or level 3 and then it became level 1 so it has gone up higher upgraded to the higher one. then how what what we, how we will follow it so they are saying a sme the which does not disclose certain information pursuant to exemption and relaxations given to it should disclose by way the note of to its financial statement the fact that it is an sme and has complied with accounting standard in so far as they are applicable to entities falling in level 2 and level 3 as the case may be okay so and he see whatever they have asked when any company or entity falls under that category whatever the accounting standards are applicable to them it is mandatory to follow if they are not following they have to disclose it okay if they are following well and good it is mandatory so they should follow it but if they are not following the disclosure to the same extent they have to give if they are applying more than what is required then also the accounting standards says it's it's here if an entity covered in level 2 and level 3 opts not to avail of the exemptions and rela- relaxations available to that level of entity in respect of any but not all the accounting standard it should disclose here it is saying like they are not availing that exemptions and relaxations and they are giving disclosures according lee then they should disclose the same in respect of which it has availed the exemptions and relaxations like partly they have accepted and partly not then to the extent of the same they should disclose it they should make a statement explaining to the general public how much they have opted the exemptions and relaxations same way if an entity covered in level 2 and level 3 desires to disclose the information not required to be disclosed then it should, if they are not required and they are disclosing then disclose according to what accounting standard says you have to apply that accounting standard okay so they say it should disclose that information in compliance with the relevant accounting standards okay then here we left it where an entity being covered in level 2 and level 3 has qualified for any exemption and relaxation previously but no longer qualifies why because it's not falling in that okay then what it should do in current accounting period the relevant standards or requirements become applicable from the current period and the figures for the corresponding of the previous accounting period need not be revised merely by the reason that it's being having been ceased to be covered in level 2 and level 3 as the case may be so the fact that the entity has covered in level 2 or level 3 as the case may be in the previous year and it has availed of the exemption or relaxations available to that level of entities should be disclosed in notes to the financial statement like it was falling in some level and now it is not falling to that so in this in this accounting period is not falling in that category criteria so they need not revise their past fi- previous years figures just a disclosure in the notes as to why what had like they had they were applicable for exemption and ex- uh, whatever the exemption and relaxations were available last year is not available same to that extent the disclosure should be made in, made in the notes to the accounts then where an entity has been covered in level 1 and subsequently ceases to be covered the entity will not qualify for exemption or relaxations available to level 2 entities until the entity ceases to be covered in level 1 for two consecutive years similarly is the case in the respect of which has been covered in level 1 or level 2 and subsequently gets to the level 3 so if they are going downwards like from level 1 they are now falling in level 2 they are not they are not fulfilling level 1 and they may fall in level 2 so they are they are they are coming down from level 1 to level 2 or level 2 to level 3 so they are saying immediately you should not make the you should not take the exemptions according to that level you should wait for 2 years two consecutive years you should observe whether really the company is not falling in level 1 and then only they should start making 
their books they should present and they should avail the exemptions and relaxation according to that level through to which it belongs but they have to wait for two consecutive years okay an entity covered in level 2 or level 3 may opt for availing certain exemption and relaxations from compliance with the requirements prescribed in an accounting standard provided that such a partial exemption or relaxation and disclosure should not be permitted to mislead or public so you can avail like opt out opt it like uh, certain exemptions and relaxations they will follow or not follow but that when you do it should not be a misleading information should not be going to the general public for whose purpose for who for whom you are preparing your financial statements then they have given in respect of accounting standard 15 employee benefits exemption and relaxations are available to level 2 and level 3 entities under two sub classification entities whose average number of persons employed during the year is 50 or more entities whose average number of employed persons employed during the year is less than 50 okay so accordingly the requirements of paragraph 1 to 6 which i read now apply to this sub classification they are saying so these are the additional requirements which you have to verify first before starting to apply accounting standards so first you have to find the find the criteria in which the entity or the company is falling and accordingly we will apply the accounting standards applicable to them okay same ad additional requirements which we read here now under the non corporate entities you will find it listed under smcs also okay these are the same things okay so you have to when you come across any company first you have to verify whether it's a smc or sme or whether it is falling in, under which level and accordingly you will apply the accounting standards applicable to it